Uh, when I think of grassroots internationalism, I think of power. I think of uh, affected communities uh, building change and creating solutions from the ground up and sharing those solutions and frameworks with each other to, uh, to win the struggles that we're fighting. Um, I think GGJ is important in this political moment for a number of reasons. I think um, the voices that GGJ mobilizes and represents are voices that really need to be heard at this time. Um, and this is also a time where mainstream organizations um, are really taking over the space and trying to speak on our behalf. And I think GGJ carves a space for our own people to speak for themselves. Grassroots internationalism means that it's a people movement, people democracy. Um, that's essentially how things get done. Um, without a grassroots movement, we wouldn't have the things we have today, like um, you know, basic human rights, essentially. GGJ is extremely important in this political moment because it needs. We, the only, we're reaching a very or four crises. We have an ecological crisis, an economic crisis, a political crisis, and a social crisis. And in order to create the solutions that we really need, there needs to be an international grassroots movement, um, not only here in the U.S. but in every single country around the world that is mobilizing together to fight for a new future, a new economy, something that we could all work for, you know, a new economy that works for people on the planet, and moving away from a war economy to a peace economy that would then solve also the climate change. So I think that's one of the things that GGJ is doing, is linking all of these grassroots organizations around the world to, to come as a front, an umbrella organization that shows an opposition to the status quo and building a new future that works for everyone. Well, grassroots internationalism is when everyday working people, uh, everyday uh, uh, poor working people, unemployed, our youth, see the connection between what's happening in the world and what's happening in their community. Um, Black Workers for Justice happened to run into or, or have a chance to work with grassroots global justice through the World Social Forum, the U.S. Social uh, Forum process, and also through uh, some of the campaigns that uh, Grassroots Global Justice has uh, been engaged in over the years. And it has given us an opportunity to see the connection between our everyday work, fighting for uh, public service workers, fighting uh, against environmental racism here in North Carolina, building people's assemblies, and connecting it up to the broader popular movements and seeing the connections and the lessons. So um, Grassroots Global Justice, I think, has been a, a fine uh, organization and um, forum for those discussions and also for that work since we build allies with many other organizations who are part of this alliance. I think grassroots internationalism, um, it's, a, it's a framework, well, not just a framework, but it's, it's one that has a real impact on the way that we conceive of and do our work, right? It means that, you know, we... Um, are based in the U.S., but we really see how connected our work is to other struggles in other countries, um, not just in the U.S., but in the global south, in Asia, in Africa, all around the world. Um, and we, we see our role here in the U.S. as um, critical in terms of you know, providing support and learning from other struggles, um, but also vice versa, right? And so not we don't see our work as isolated just as here in the United States, but really see it as connected to a broader global movement um, and really see our role here in the U.S. living in the belly of the beast, so-called belly of the beast, as playing a key role in, in supporting other, other movements in other countries. Uh, grassroots internationalism to me means... Uh, getting together uh, and really working from a base, you know, of, of uh, just an every person base, um, working together on an international level and getting, fo getting uh, the, the, the struggle really in motion and getting folks really activated um, and really participant, participating in, in, in moving forward, you know, all, you know, fighting against all these social injustices, um, specifically like being inspired by what's going on um, in Europe right now, what's going on in, uh, in, uh, in the Arab, you know, in, in the Middle East and with the Arab Spring and um, just really getting things, you know, concretized and moving forward.
I think GGJ is actually important in this political moment because I feel that a lot of, I think the key that's missing right now um, in in the movement really is is getting the 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 U.S. Um, uh, puzzle piece into the international movement. I think GGJ provides that uh, as a way to uh, really get in touch with what our brothers and sisters uh, in, in the world are, are faced with. And I mean, being that uh, this country and, and the way it interacts with the world um, is a large, uh, I guess it's a large uh, abuser, like uh, within, the, you know, within the environmental movement, within the uh, militarization movement, um, and just economic injustice throughout I think it's it's our responsibility to really come together as um, Americans and as you know people from the northern, northern region to really push and fight against uh, these injustices um, I think actually in this moment people are really looking for some hope <laughs> um, I think there's a lot of there's a recession people are you know losing their jobs um, people are having a really rough time and they're looking for some kind of hope that we can actually build something together. And I really think GGJ is a place where people find commonality. Um, we find people that, are, that care about the same things, that are impacted about the same things, but also have a critical analysis and have a vision for, you know, we want to change things and we want to be hopeful, but we also really want to strategize and figure out what do we need to do to get to this new world. And I think GGJ creates space for that to happen. Um, GGJ really convenes some of the most incredible thinkers and a lot of my heroes are, are involved in GGJ, which is, which is why I'm so excited to be part of the organization. This is interesting. I, a group of us in the committees have been discussing the long struggle and march toward democracy, a substantive democracy, around a document that Jack O'Dell circulated among us called the Democracy Charter. Now, the Democracy Charter is instructed by a lot of the significant pieces of history of the 50s, the Freedom Charter, the Bandung Conference, and the Montgomery Bus Boycott. And in the early stages of our discussion, one of our members, Bill Fletcher, mentioned the grassroots global justice, this initiative and suggested that we may want to turn that document over to the you young people and have let you have a go at it, not encumbered by us graybeards and elders. And when I got this invitation a few months ago to come here as an observer, one of the members of that committee and our organ committees said, you know, that's the group that Bill mentioned when we first started our discussions. And since having that, uh, uh, you know, raised and called to my attention, I've been interested in coming. This has been very impressive. This is quite stimulating. Um, it's a profound emergence in this long struggle. <clears throat> the, you're very young, very energetic, very bright, very creative, and extremely comfortably and well diversed that's the encouraging it's the new face of america that i see here Ooh, grassroots internationalism grassroots internationalism to me means mm, it means organizing from a place of recognizing that the oppression that we all face doesn't know national boundaries that it's um, that the systems of um, economic exploitation of environmental destruction of um, of um, human rights violations um, that that all of these things are global systems and that grassroots internationalism is uh, a mindset that recognizes that and then it's also an approach to to resisting those systems and to changing and transforming those systems that um, understands that it's the people who most understand the impacts of those systems because they live them every day that uh, are going to change those systems through mutual solidarity and collective action and not just through rhetoric or charity.
I can say, I can say, I think GGJ is important because we are the only force that I know of that is trying to build grassroots internationalism within the U.S. across issue areas and across constituencies and across regions. So even though that means that sometimes people don't really get what we do <laughs> because it's a really big mandate and a really big job, um, I think that the people who do really get it are extremely committed to GGJ because they understand how critical it is to making transformative change on uh, a scale that's large enough to um, to change some conditions for the long haul and not just for the short term for our people. Yeah, so Grassroots Global Justice was founded out of the social forum process. Um, we were a big part of the world social forum process, and from that really helped start the, the first U.S. social forum and then continued that process over the last uh, five or six years. GGJ is a six-year-old alliance, um, and so now has pulled off two social forums you know, with the movement um, and have also grown. We are now 50 to 60 member-based organizations, and our, and our members are all together. Um, they, they're unified around this concept of grassroots internationalism, linking... Uh, our local work, our local struggles, the things that we feel every day, connecting those to what's happening internationally, what's happening to people on a local level in other parts of the world, and connecting also to, to other social movements, trying to you know change that face of solidarity. A lot of times the solidarity that's um, able to, to visit other places in the world has more of a white liberal face, and GGJ has, a really, has done a lot to really change that and shift that and show that there is also really deep solidarity from communities of color, low-income communities, communities that are impacted by the same issues that are impacting the movements around the world. Um, I think uh, it's, well, I'm just really excited that we all came together around this, and I think it's been a really um, key year for GGJ. In the last year, we've done a lot of consultation, really trying to get um, move us into a new phase of work. And I think this new phase around no war, no warming, build an economy for the people on the planet is uh, a phase of really trying to engage deeper in the membership of our member organizations. Uh, I think GGJ has had a lot of success in organizing the leaders of some really incredible grassroots groups around the country. And now we're trying to reach even farther than that and find ways to plug more folks in. So I think this Congress, uh, we, we had people coming uh, that weren't, we have the leaders coming, but we also have a lot of new members um, who, have, who are maybe less active but are just also beginning to get to know the concept of grassroots internationalism. Um, well, Ruckus doesn't really have a constituency, but our, our, our work is to support movements that are fighting things like the war and climate change. And I think, you know, we really see ourselves supporting GGJ and the member organizations of GGJ to create strategic interventions in the struggle against the war and in climate change. Um, and certainly the communities that we work with and the people we serve are adversely affected by both of these issues. And so, you know, for us, it's a it's a matter of collaborating and building power with GGJ and its member organizations um, to really create strategic direct actions that win our campaigns. Yeah, so there's different ways how the military and militarization has impacted my life. Um, one is when I was in school, there were nothing but recruiters there, recruiting young people to go into the military and in fact, some of my friends went to war um, right after September 11. They were recruited, they thought that this was a just war, but then they came back and they were completely traumatic. Uh, they had a really traumatic experience and they came back with PTSD and that had a very adverse neg negative impact on them. And, and even with my own family members, that's also occurred. Uh, the militarization, the, that region, and even within Mexico now that you see a lot of, lot of drug cartels emerging in Mexico. Some of these drug cartels has, have even killed some of my family members in Mexico. And the repression that comes from the militarization of these regions that are being funded by the military powers here in the United States. So militarization goes beyond borders and it's, the epicenter is coming here from the United States and it's spreading all over the world and it's having a huge negative impact. And also um, climate change, that's having a huge impact um, all over the world. Um, with me, for example, um, I live in Washington, D.C. and we've had some of the most record hot days in the year. You know, this is all over the, the U.S. The hottest days were, were breaking records of heat all over the country. 
And now we're also facing large floods. So Hurricane Irene is one of the examples. We're right now in, in, in North Carolina and here it swept through here, went all through the East Coast and destroyed tons of homes. And it, this is gonna cost the United States billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars to, re, to finish that. And what does that mean? That means all that money is going to be taken away from creating actual jobs that we need, jobs for the future. And instead, our priorities are completely wrong. This, this could have been completely changed if we had a new economic system, something that works for people on the planet. Well, I think, you know, I think we're, we're all affected by climate change, right? I think some more directly than others. Um, for me, um, our, our base is primarily in the Asian immigrant communities um, here in the U.S., particularly in New York City. And I think for a lot of people, um, their migration story is very connected to um, climate change, to um, militarization, to war that's forced them out of their home countries, um, to the fact that their economies are so tied to that of the U.S. Um, in such a way that poor and working class people can't actually find decent, um, dignified work in their home countries. And so then they, they move here to the U.S. And so... You know, the way that we see um, this no war, no warming, build the economy for the people on the planet, um, really, you know, lifting up and supporting our communities um, is by changing the, you know, the, you know, all of our material conditions, right, um, in protecting um, our right to basic things like housing, uh, clean air, dignity, you know, dignified, dignified employment, um, water, food security, um, but really also kind of, you know, protecting the, the survival of, of all peoples. I feel um, with respect to the militarization, um, locally I feel that uh, in, in the New York area there's a big... Uh, within, within the police, uh, there's, there's a lot of institutionalized um, aggression, you know, on uh, black and brown uh, brothers and sisters, and there needs to definitely be a change in that uh, local... Uh, militarizing you know local like violence against us um, and and really you know coming together and really uh, putting a stop to that and secondly with the uh, uh, no warming um, in New York State right now they're trying to push hydrofracking and that's something that's going to affect um, a very basic uh, 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 natural resource of you know which is water and you know it's it's going through with uh, minimal uh, uh, resistance by the by the political structure and we as a community have an opportunity to come together and really put a stop to that and and it would just really uh, m move you know move so many things forward and really put things into action um, within I guess New York State to, to really as us as the people to, to, to put a stop to, to these injustices environmental and milita uh, military military um, so we wanted to, f we've been struggling to come up with, um, to kind of push the movement to, to think a little bit harder about how to connect these issues. You know, I think um, in some ways it doesn't always click that climate justice and anti-militarism are connected. But I think GGJ is really pushing to find the, uh, a way to help us realize that the same way um, that the money is being spent on this military on this military budget, which is devastating communities in the U.S. and around the world, the same people that are running that military budget are also spending huge amounts of money on the carbon trading market and spending huge amounts of money on really devastating environmental practices that are also devastating our communities. So we wanted to make a link and show that you know that there all of the 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 no war, no warming, that the money that's being spent on devastating environmental practices and militarization really should be reinvested in our communities. So I think we're trying to challenge and show that link and say that we know alternatives. We know where that money could actually be spent to build people's lives, not to destroy them. Well, um, right now I live in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. And uh, what's going on in San Juan is a pretty powerful and deep example of why we need this no war, no warming, build an economy for the people on the planet initiative. Um, and it's because, um, you know, right now uh, the economic crisis that in Puerto Rico is only um, worsened by its colonial status um, means that the unemployment rate is chronically high, so 20-something percent. And um, 
that together with the fact that um, the informal economy in the form of the drug trade um, uh, and Puerto Rico being a transit point um, to the U.S. From, from Central America has just led to a lot of crime and violence and then consequently uh, police occupations and police violence in, in Puerto Rico. So there's, there's essentially a war going on. Puerto Rico is in the crossroads of um, the economic crisis and the drug war. That, that, that comes as a part of that. Um, and it has a homicide rate right now that is, um, uh, that is almost um, twice that of New York City. It's, it's, out of, it's kind of out of control. And people are suffering. And um, the environmental connection to that is that while they're suffering because of unemployment and because of um, you know the violence that's that's connected to that um, meanwhile the government is trying to generate revenue by um, privatizing public lands that are absolutely key for such a small island to be able to have supplies of fresh water um, and for um, the island to have any kind of future in food sovereignty or in food sustainability. Uh, so if, if those, all those lands are sold off and um, uh, uh, a karst country destroyed, um, the, the sort of little bit of uh, opportunity for, for, for sovereignty is uh, 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 really going to be destroyed. So, so, so that's an environmental connection in terms of land ownership um, and self-determination that um, would also connect back to the opportunity to create more jobs you know, in agriculture, uh, um, uh, in uh, uh, clean water infrastructure um, that would actually serve the development of the island for its people. One of the things we've learned from the World Social Forums, we had an opportunity to meet many of these uh, trade unionists in Palestine and the Union of South Africa or Zania and began to understand uh, how unions can help transform uh, not only the everyday conditions in the workplace, but also in the broader society and also uh, internationally. Particularly learned this from the uh, Kasatu, the South African trade union move movement, or, or unions that we met uh, in Brazil and Venezuela during two of the World Social Forums. And understood, began to understand, better understand what the role is of social justice unionism, revolutionary unionism, and transforming society, rather than just seeing it as a place or an organization that just builds uh, better working conditions? Well, I think that, uh, you know, it's absolutely important that civil society in the United States, you know, develop a anti-racist, anti-colonial uh, 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 framework of, of organizing that's deeply rooted in, uh, in, in, in social movements. Um, I think that with the collapse of the American Energy and Climate Securities Bill, uh, in other words, uh, the failure of cap and trade, um, you know, we've seen that the market-based approach uh, to mitigating climate change uh, will not work. Um, and, you know, we have to look to what actually keeps the oil in the soil, what keeps the tar sands in the land, and what keeps the coal in the hole, and that's hardcore grassroots organizing. And so, you know, I... I'm leaving this gathering very inspired by the fact that we are localizing power in the interest of globalizing justice and uh, you know many of our relations in the global south uh, you know across mother earth over uh, are looking to civil society in the United States um, to act as allies here uh, in the belly of the beast uh, to really target the corporations that are ravaging not only our Native American lands here in the United States and in Canada, but the same damn companies that are operating all over the planet. Um, so we play a critical role in what is essentially the largest social movement uh, to emerge ever in the history of humanity, and that's the fight to protect the sacredness of Mother Earth from the global climate crisis and from the drivers of that crisis, which of course is our economic paradigm. So, uh, you know, fight the power. More power to the people. No war, no warming. Uh, let's build that people's economy. Well, in this particular period, 
it's very important that grassroots global justice tries to find a way to try to build some unity of thinking, uh, some political uh, unity, so that we can try to find ways to build broader national campaigns that begin to impact some of the uh, international impacts of globalization. Um, this year's Congress has been really excellent. You know, I think as uh, our alliance continues to expand and to deepen its analysis, and I think most importantly as the relationships between environmental and social justice organizations across the country that make up grassroots global justice, um, as our relationships get stronger, you know, we develop more effective uh, strategy and tactics, uh, including um, the new platform, No Warming, or No War, No Warming, Building the People's Economy, which is uh, uh, one of the platforms that we adopted here at this Congress, uh, which is going to enable us to uh, work towards uh, the Earth Summit in Rio in 2012, and of course this year in Durban, and uh, really, I think, draw the parallels between uh, some of the major systemic things that are um, uh, elevating or, or, or accentuating, um, you know, uh, U.S. imperialism, U.S. consumer-based uh, hyperbole individualism, uh, uh, auto-centered uh, uh, economy, um, and really uh, help us uh, lift up, you know, a, a different vision. Uh, for, our, for our communities and, and really for the country uh, so that the United States can, can, can you know, lead in the fight against global warming and other critical uh, global issues. It rocked! We did it! Um, you know, there was a lot of anticipation and anxiety heading into it um, because I think that, you know, it's just one of those moments that felt like a make or break moment. We um, were at a point where we're like, okay, this is our chance to really integrate our work and take it to another level. If it doesn't work, what are we going to do? Because the time is now and the urgency of the economic and ecological crises and expansion of empire um, are just getting, it's getting more and more hyped. So I think that the people who are here, amazing. They all give me hope. They all make me um, feel really confident that uh, we might actually get to a turning point in these crises. So it was wonderful, it was fabulous, uh, good music, good food, great discussions, um, and um, just some real relationships built that we can move forward with and that can drive the work uh, that's to come.